Looks good enough to keep. We've got our colors, red, white, and green. So we'll start on our tap land. Swamp from our opponent. Let's go with the Zeatora's Proving Ground, enters tapped, and we'll play Kumano faces Kakazan. Stage one will trigger, dealing one damage to our opponent. Next turn, stage two will trigger, letting us put a counter onto the next creature we cast, which is most likely gonna be the Neshoba Brawler. Murex from our opponent and a Reckoner Bank Buster. So for two mana, they can tap this to draw a card. They can also crew it for three. Back to us, and we draw a land. So let's play the Neshoba Brawler. It'll pick up a counter. Its power is equal to the number of land types we control. Two mana, five, four, trample, not too bad. And back to our opponent. They'll play a Swamp and play Graveyard Trespasser. It's a 3-3 with Ward, discard a card. When it enters the battlefield, they can exile a card from a graveyard. Both graveyards are empty, so nothing happens there. We draw a tap land, and Kumano faces Kakazan will flip. Now our opponent can crew their Reckoner Bankbuster, so we just have to be careful with our attacks here. But I think we'll attack with our mana open. If they crew Bankbuster, we'll get to play Gaia's Might. No blocks. They take seven down to 12. And then we'll play Weather Seed Treaty. A three-mana saga. On stage one, we get to search our library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. Stage two creates a 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature token. And stage three, which is really the important part here, is target creature we control gets plus X plus X and gains trample until end of turn, where X is the number of basic land types we control. And we'll go ahead and start on stage two, since we don't really need the land right now. And we'll set ourselves up to trigger stage three on our next turn. Our opponent plays another land, deciding to crew the Bank Buster. And attack for four. Happy to not block here. We go down to 16. Our opponent plays Archfiend of the Dross. So for four mana, they get a 6-6 six, six Flyer. So that thing's a little bit scary, but I think we can play around it. Let's go ahead and pump up the Neshoba Brawler, because this will enable an attack past the Archfiend of the Dross. Play our tap land. And I think we're just going to use our mana and drop the Fleetfoot Dancer. So they kind of have a scripted block here on the Brawler, which they take. They lose the Archfiend and they're down to two, so opponent under a ton of pressure here. They play another land and shoulder it. Not sure that that's good enough. Pass to us and we'll draw and the Scoob. Good game. Happy to keep this as well. Before we jump into the game, if you like playing budget decks as much as I do, please consider subscribing for more, like this green-white enchantments aggro deck with zero rares, or this Naya Dino deck that looks to kill our opponent with a 2020 Imperiosaur. Okay, back to the game. So opponent starts with the Obscura Storefront, grabbing an island, back to us. So let's drop the Evolving Adaptive. It starts out as a 1-1, but it will grow over the course of the game as we play other creatures with greater power and toughness than it. And back to our opponent. They play a Plains and pass the turn, but they definitely have something, some instant or flash creature. We'll play a Mountain and a Shoba Brawler. So it'll just be a 2-3 for now, since we only have two basic land types. But it will grow the Adaptive and we'll get to attack for two. Opponent down to 19. And flash in Cathar Commando on our end step. So opponent on soldiers, it looks like. Attacking in for three. We'll take this. Down to 17. And they pass again. Let's go ahead and play our untapped land. This way we can get our Weather Seed Treaty down. This time we are going to start on stage one because we do want an untapped white source for next turn. We want to be able to cast our Fleetfoot Dancer. And that will pump the Neshoba Brawler up to 3 power. Get in for 5. Opponent down to 14. And they flash in a Zephyr Sentinel. They don't return anything to their hand. But they are interested in a race, which is interesting. So they're coming in for 5. We're down to 12. Weather Seed Treaty will trigger, getting us a 1-1. One, one. And we'll play our Sacred Peaks tapped. And let's just go ahead and drop the Fleetfoot Dancer. If they can't deal with this, the Lifelink should put us in a really good position to win the game. Triggers our Evolving Adaptive. And we'll get in. Ooh, a Wandering Emperor from our opponent. I'm assuming they're going to exile the Fleetfoot Dancer. And they do. So they gain two life up to 16. 
take six back down to ten. This is a close game. Interested to see what they have here. Putting a counter on the Cathar Commando. They feel pretty confident about this race. We go down to six. But we are getting the trigger from Weather Seed Treaty next turn. And our opponent might be in some trouble. We have a Haste Creature and some Lightning Strikes. Let's see how the math works out. So they gain some life up to 13. Let's pump up the Sapperling. It will get Trample. And if we drop the Iconoclast with Haste, it unfortunately doesn't trigger the Adaptive because it gets plus one, plus one after it enters. But this should be enough. Opponent blocking the Adaptive. They take 11 down to two and finish them off with a lightning strike.